Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. The children of the corn have invaded Lincoln. It is a sea of red, an always sold out Memorial Stadium, one of the most intimidating venues in all of college football, and Nebraska set to defend its home turf. Thanks for checking out the pregame show, NCAA College Football Action, coming up next with Brad and Kirk on the call. David and I will see you at halftime. Memorial Stadium and Lincoln, Nebraska, the site for this incredible game. Year two with the Nebraska Cornhuskers is now underway. We start the season taking on South Alabama of the Sun Belt. First, we're going to see a new look defense for the Cornhuskers. Not only do we have a lot of new personnel on defense this year, we also have a new defensive coordinator in Jeff Halfley. Last year, he was the head coach at Boston College. This year, he takes over a defense that struggled last year can we see improvement over in, under a new defensive coordinator? Well, it doesn't look like it because three broken tackles and 80 yards and South Alabama take a lead after one play. Worst start possible. I wanted to see even more improvement this year. I wanted to get to a Big Ten championship, but that was gonna require a better defense. And from what we've seen so far, we might be even worse because that was absolutely atrocious. Now our offense comes out on first and 10, their first chance to do something. Can they do something good? It is a deep pass and it is broken up. If that would have been an interception, it would have just been the absolute perfect start, but kind of in the opposite direction. In terms of personnel, there's not as much change on offense this year. The biggest changes is at the offensive line, where we have a new center, right guard, and right tackle. Skill positions, mostly the same with one new guy, and that is James Hill at wide receiver. Second and 10, we're gonna be in shotgun. Obviously, Jeff Hahn, still our quarterback. Jake Pierce, still our running back and a really good catch. I think that is the tight end who was our best receiver last year. And each team starts off the game with a big play. Ronnie Jennings goes 60 yards. Okay, that's a way to answer. Still need to get in the end zone though. Offensively, I feel like we really struggled because we didn't generate enough big plays. That's what we really missed out on. And well, we had one there. Hopefully we can keep it going over the rest of this season. Keep getting some more big plays. First and 10, we're gonna be in pistol, two tight ends to the right hand side. And it's gonna be a read option the first carry of the day. And well, the tight end blocked no one. And so Jeff Holland never stood a chance and he loses four. Ryan Dons with his first reception of the season on second down, but it only goes for five yards. So we're gonna be in a third and nine situation and we really need to answer South Alabama's touchdown. We're gonna to be in a bunch look to the right-hand side. This is the formation we really like to use. And Jeff Holland's gonna look to throw. It's gonna be a five man rush. He's gonna have time. He's gonna to have to lay it off to the running back. Who's gonna get past one man before he gets ridden out of bounds after a gain of seven. It's going to be fourth and two, and they may have to go for it. And there is no hesitation from Nebraska. They are going for this on fourth and two. They're going to come out in a shotgun look with three receivers. Ronnie Jennings lined up in the backfield with Jake Pierce and Jeff Holland. And it's going to be Jake Pierce getting his first carry of the game. And it's going to get him that first down and get him down to the one yard line. An eight yard run makes it first and goal. Now can they get this into the end zone? Yakez Yen is going to be in the backfield for the first time this season. He is our short yardage guy. And he's going to get the carry on a goal line package, and he's going to walk into the end zone. And Nebraska answer the long run by South Alabama with a touchdown of their own. All right, now can we see some progress from this defense? It's sad, though, that a progress is actually making one tackle and not allowing one play go for a touchdown. First and 10, they're going to get to the running back again. Why wouldn't they? We do actually make the tackle. He gets five yards before we bring him down. I think it was Blaze Gunnerson with the tackle. The biggest change in our defense this year is three new linebackers, and Blaze Gunnerson is one of them. We also have two new cornerbacks, second and five, and they're gonna look to throw for the first time. South Alabama, looking for his man over the middle and he is wide open. He runs over defender and breaks another tackle. We have seen no tackling today. Deshaun Ward is absolutely destroying us. I thought we might have some issues in the running game with three new linebackers, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. I thought they'd actually have the ability to tackle. Okay, we have a tackle and it's actually for a loss. We send a blitz and I think it's Tim Hart who gets the tackle for loss. All right, we've put him behind the six. Now can we make a play on second down? Second and 11, they're gonna go four wide. 
We're going to rush forward. The quarterback's going to take off himself. And it's going to be the first sack of the season. And it is Tim Hart. Once again, back-to-back -back tackle for loss and then a sack. And now they're in third and 17. A great spin move there by Tim Hart to get in the backfield. And he takes down the quarterback before he can get to the edge. All right, now, third and 17. We shouldn't be able to screw up from here. But this is what we did last year. We got into some good situations, and then we found ways to screw him up. He's going to throw the ball, but it's going to fall incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary. A little bit of pass rush. And so the ball falls incomplete. We're going to force a punt. So the defense improves on their last outing. It does one better and actually gets a stop near midfield. So now the offense comes back out. They had a good first drive. They're going to have two running backs in the backfield this time. Ramir Johnson is first look. And it's actually going to be... Uh, Jeff Hahn who takes it a triple option look and Jeff Hahn takes it for 22 we have positive rushing yards Ramir Johnson gets his first carry of the season on first down and it goes for four yards so it's going to be second and six Nebraska are going to have trips to the right hand side from shotgun and Jeff Hahn's going to look to throw a four-man rush and Jeff Hahn's going to take off himself he's going to break the first tackle but he doesn't break the second one he actually gets credited for a sack loses two yards he never liked to get sacked but Jeff Hahn has taken many worse sacks in his career so I guess we'll have to accept it it's going to be third and eight, though. They need to see if they can get this conversion. Three receivers on the field, and Jeff Hahn's going to throw. It's going to be a blitz. He's got to get it out, and he does, but the pass is off the line. I was hoping to see some improvement in his accuracy this year. He struggled with it at times last year. That one, there was no reason for that to be incomplete. He had the time. He had an open receiver, and he couldn't even put it close to him. So after quick scoring drives on their first attempts, both teams are forced to punt on their second drives. This is the third one for South Alabama. They're going to be in the shotgun, the three receivers on the field. And it's going to be a speed option, and it does not work. The true sophomore defensive end this year, Antonio Gilmore, gets to him and hits him for a tackle for loss. All right, we're starting to make a few more tackles. And we're stopping them for a loss of yardage. It's going to be second and 13 now, and it's going to be a read option. The quarterback's going to take it himself. It's actually a triple option. The wide receiver was involved, and the quarterback's going to break a tackle, and he's going to go 24. After another big run for South Alabama, an incompletion on first down makes it second and 10. I don't even know why they're throwing at this point. We cannot tackle them. First and 10 is another speed option. Just some awful, awful play calling for South Alabama. To throw the ball on first down and then to run a speed option, which didn't work the last time. I don't understand it, but it's going to be third and 13. And this should be a passing situation for South Alabama, so we don't have to worry about their running back. At least hopefully. It's actually going to be a screen possibly, though. And it is, and we try to make a play on it, but we overrun it. And so we give up the conversion. The defense made mistake after mistake after mistake last year. And apparently this year is going to be no different. Two yard run on first down, and so it's second and eight. But unless we can actually get our heads out of our butts and actually do something right, it's gonna be more points for South Alabama. It's gonna be, unless they just love calling speed options all the time. This one might actually work because he keeps breaking tackles, but he does only get three. We're getting close to the point where we might already have more broken tackles for South Alabama than our defense allowed in any singular game last year. Third and five, they're gonna look to throw, and they've got another open receiver, and it's another easy 17 yards. They're going to be first and goal. They're going to be putting up some points. We got the stop on the second drive, but this one's been just as bad as the first drive. The defense has looked absolutely awful. A short run on first down makes a second and goal, and he's going to walk into the end zone without being touched. We have no run defense. We haven't really seen much of our passing defense, but I don't think it's very good either. We might go backwards this year. It looks like we're going to have to rely on our offense to carry us once again this season, and I don't know if they can do it because they haven't had a great start to the game today, especially in the passing game. First and 10, Brian Donson is going to come in motion and get into the backfield. And it's going to be a handoff to Jake Pierce up the middle. And he's going to have some big space in front of him. And it might be a big run for Jake Pierce, and it is. South Alabama had a huge run of their own on first down as well. The first play of their drive. And we equal it there as Jake Pierce goes 80 yards for a big play touchdown. We have two really huge plays so far today. Something we didn't do almost at all last year. And that was tremendous running by Jake Pierce. So that evens it up at 14, and we're still not out of the first quarter. Just a crazy first half. South Alabama have the ball back on offense. First and 10. They're going to drive down the field one more time. Quarterback's going to look to take off. I feel like our defensive tackle should have been able to hit him in the backfield, but instead he runs for eight yards. And with that, the crazy first quarter is over. So we start the second quarter tied up at 14, but this is not an optimistic look for Nebraska. South Alabama are one of the weaker teams we will take on this year. They're a good team in their own right, but they're a Sunbelt team, and they're average. And we have looked pretty awful defensively. They run a read option on first down. And we actually make a tackle on the first try. So it only goes for two yards. Second and eighth. The quarterback's going to look to run more time. But it's the first sack of the season by Ty Robinson. He's led us in sacks the past two years. This is going to be his senior season. And he gets a sack nice and early. 
So the defense, once again, starts off in a pretty decent position. Third and 15. How are they going to screw this one up? It's going to be a throw. Do we extra protection in? He's going to look downfield, and it is a play made by Gary Thompson, the true sophomore cornerback. He's going to be our number one corner this year, and he finally makes a good play, and we get another stop. Jake Pierce went for 80 on his last drive for a touchdown. This time he goes for one, and then we have an incompletion on second down, and so it's third and nine. So far, we've scored on our first drive, did nothing on our second drive, scored on our sec third drive, looks like we might do nothing on our fourth drive, and South Alabama have matched that as well. What a weird start. Third and nine, three receivers to the right-hand side. Jeff Holland's going to look to throw. Four-man rush. He's going to get there. He's going to look for his man in the sideline, and he's got the completion. It is Will Nixon with his first reception of the season. Nick goes for 24 and moves the chains. So they keep the drive going. Now Ramir Johnson is going to join Jake Pierce in the backfield. And looks like Jake Pierce is going to go in motion. It is a heavy box, and it is a screen out of it. And Ramir Johnson might have some space in front of him. He's going to get past one man, and it's another big play. He breaks the tackle. Is this going to be another touchdown? It is. A 54-yard screen pass for Ramir Johnson. He breaks the tackle along the way as well. We barely had any big plays all season long. We might not have had a play bigger than this all of last season. We've had three massive plays so far today. So it's actually back-to-back -back good drives for the Nebraska defense as they force South Alabama to go three and out. So the offense has the ball back in good field position. On first down, a run loses a yard, so it's going to be a second and 11. They're going to be in shotgun, and Jeff Holland's going to look to throw. Four-man rush. He's going to look for his tight end near the sideline, and he's got him for a gain of about four yards. So it's another third down for the Nebraska offense. This one, third and six. A little bit more bakeable than their last couple of attempts. They're going to have a bunch to the right-hand side, and Jeff Holland's going to look to throw. It's going to be a blitz. He's going to get the ball out of his hands, and he does. And is that the tight end one more time? It is. Rodney Jennings was his number one target last year, and it started off pretty, pretty much the same. So Nebraska moves the chains. A seven-yard reception by Brian Donaldson on first down makes it second and three. They're going to stay in a shotgun look with three receivers on the field. And it's going to be a handoff to Jake Pierce up the middle. He's going to get enough to move the chain to give him another first down. A one-yard carry on first down, so it's going to be second and nine from the 33-yard line. They're going to be in a shotgun look, three receivers on the field. Tight wide receiver is going to come in motion. That's Will Nixon. He's going to look to throw. He's got a lot of men running at him on a blitz. And he finds Will Nixon on the crossing route for a gain of 10 and another first down. So it's another good drive so far for the Nebraska offense. Brian Donaldson is going to come in motion on first down, and he's going to get the carry on a jet sweep. He's going to cut it up the middle, and he's got some space in front of him, and he gets a big gain. Brian Donaldson gets the ball, and he goes for 16 yards. A one-yard run and then a four-yard reception, both for Jake Pierce, makes it third and goal. Can they get in the end zone? They're going to be in a bunch look, and Jeff Holland's going to look to throw. He's going to have time. He's going to look for Jake Pierce one more time out of the backfield, but there is absolutely nowhere for him to go, and he loses a yard. So Nebraska, after a good drive, might be forced to just take three points. So Nebraska tacks on three to make it a two-score game. Now South Alabama offense has the ball back, but they only have 50 seconds to work with. They're going to have to drive down the field pretty quick. They're going to look to throw on first down, but the quarterback's going to take off. It's another sack for Ty Robinson, and not what South Alabama needed there. Nebraska's going to take their first time out. They're going to see if they can get this ball back. Nebraska have had a lot of big plays on offense today, so they could go down the field and get some more points if they can get this ball back. 44 seconds left. It's going to be second and 12. South Alabama are going to continue throwing. He's going to look over the middle on a crossing route. And it goes for seven yards. So it's going to be third and five. They're going to rush back to the line. And they're going to look to throw. They snap it from a shotgun look. The quarterback's going to take off, and he's got the space. He's going to run for the first down. He gets about 10 or 15 yards. Only 27 seconds left, though. So it's a new first down. They're going to have the ball about the 45-yard line. They can still pretty comfortably get into field goal range unless they run it, which they do, and they don't break four or five tackles like usual. That was a questionable play call, but I guess when every single run breaks three tackles and they go for 70 yards, it kind of makes sense. A play action pass now on second down, and it is broken up by Malik Williams, a new starting cornerback for us. A good play there to break up the pass. So it's going to be third and eight, 21 seconds remaining. South Alabama still with one timeout to work with, but they need to get this first down. They're going to look to throw for it. It's going to be a screen pass. Is he going to have the space? He's got some. Can he break the tackles he needs? No, he can't. So it only goes for five yards. There's 14 seconds left. They're forced to punt. Nebraska take their second time out. Anything can happen here. They're going to see what they can do with the ball with around 10 seconds. Left. So Nebraska have eight seconds and one time out to drive 80 yards. We've seen them do it before. They're going to be in a shotgun look. Three receivers on the field. Brian Donaldson is going to come in motion, and he's not going to get it. It's going to be a screen pass, and they cover it up really well. And they get the sack. They lose four. And so we're just going to see this half out. Nebraska has a two-score lead, up 24-14, going into halftime. Coming out of halftime, Nebraska have a two-score lead and have a chance to build on it with the first drive of the half. First and 10, they're going to be the three-receiver look. 
and it's gonna be jake pierce up the middle he's got some space this time he's gonna run over one man and get seven yards we try to run the ball again on second down and it goes nowhere we actually lose a yard so it's gonna be third and five jeff holland might have his first pass attempt of the second half Tiny, wide receiver's gonna come in motion that's will nixon and they are gonna look to throw it's a four-man rush it's blocked up well and he finds the man will nixon who came out on motion he gets six yards which is enough to move the chains jeff holland with an efficient start so far through the air 12 of 15 with some big plays added in there it's gonna be first and 10 now they're gonna be staying a shotgun look three receivers on the field and tynan's gonna go in motion and it's gonna be a handoff to jake, uh, to jake pierce one more time off this little shotgun look and he's gonna get another seven yards on first down and it's deja vu because on second down once again jake pierce loses a yard so it's going to be third and five. Two tight ends on the field from Pistol. It's going to be a heavy blitz. Jeff Holland's got to get the ball out of his hands. And he does, and he finds Brian Donaldson, who holds on to it, and gets another six yards on third down, giving them the first down. That was almost freaky. On first down, we got seven yards. Then we lost one. Then we got six to move the chains. Wild. First and ten. They're going to start in shotgun this time with a bunch of the right-hand side. And it's going to be a delayed handoff to Jake Pierce. And, well, he doesn't go for seven. He loses four. Jeff Holland scrambles on second down, but he can't even get back the lost yardage. So it's going to be third and 11 here. Jeff Holland scrambled on second down, couldn't even get back all the yardage. It's third and 11. Trips to the right hand side. Jeff Holland's going to look to throw and towards the sideline. And yeah, Will, Will Nixon has no chance there. It is yet another three and out for the South Alabama offense. After the worst start possible for the Nebraska defense, they've really come to their own the last couple of drives and have played really well recently. Now, can the offense equal that? First and 10. And they're going to go with play action pass. The running game has been basically non-existent outside of a couple long runs. And he finds Rodney Jennings this time. The passing game has been pretty good. Off of play action, he finds his tight end for 20 yards. Jeff Holland looks to throw again on first down, but finds no one open. So he scrambles for six yards. So now it's going to be second and four. And R Ramir Johnson is going to join Jake Pierce in the backfield from a shotgun look. Jake Pierce is going to go in motion. And it's actually going to be a throw. He's going for his man. It's the tight end one more time. Rodney Jennings pulls this one down and gets another about seven yards and moves the chains that puts him over 100 yards for the day we might not run again today our running game has not been able to do anything recently and they haven't shown they can stop our passing game so we're just going to keep passing four yard deception on first down by jake pierce so it's second and six from a shotgun look they're going to look to throw again he's going to look for near the sideline he's got his man it's jake pierce one more time who breaks the tackle and gets past the second man and speeds into the end zone it is a 25 yard receiving touchdown for jake pierce he can't do anything on the ground but just give the ball in his hands and he can make something happen he does that there after a gloom and doom start it looks like it might be a blowout over south alabama as we now have a three score lead five yard run up the middle on first down so it's gonna be second and five south alabama absolutely have to score on this drive he's gonna look short on in second down but the pass falls incomplete we've seen some decent coverage from the nebraska secondary especially over the shorter areas of the field third and five now they absolutely have to have this conversion it's going to be another screen pass for the receiver this time, and it's not going to work. They're not breaking tackles anymore. We're making tackles. We are stopping them. So he only gets three yards, and it's going to be fourth down. And with the field position, they might have to be forced to punt, even though they're down three scores and are starting the fourth quarter. But no, they do decide to go for it. Kind of makes sense down three scores with only nine minutes left. But if they don't get this, it's points for Nebraska, and they're not going to get it. They choose to run the ball on fourth down, and we make the tackle, and we stop them. So we have the ball back. We're going to get more points. I think it's game over. South Alabama were desperate, and it didn't work. So Nebraska had the ball back. First and 10, three receivers, the, or three running backs in the backfield. And it's going to be a read option, and Jeff Holland has nowhere to go. Left end pushed all the way back into the backfield, and plenty of linebackers got there, back there as well. And so, yeah, not a good start. We lose three. We got to be careful here that we don't get knocked out of field goal range at the very least. Second and 13, two receivers to the right-hand side. Jeff Holland's going to look to throw. He's going to look for his man on the backfield one more time. It's Ramirez Johnson this time, and he gets seven of those yards back. So we're back into more makeable field goal range. And Jake Pierce returns into the game on this third and five. Bunch look to the right-hand side from shotgun. It's going to be on the arm of Jeff Holland one more time. He's going to have time. He's going to look near the sideline, and it's a jumping reception for Will Nixon as he hauls it in and gets 15 yards. He's got some of the best hands in the team. He does well to pull that one down. So that makes it first and 10, and seven points is still on the board. From a pistol look, two tight ends to the right-hand side. And it's going to be Brian Donaldson in motion, who's going to get the ball one more time on a jet sweep. This one doesn't work, as he loses two. So it's more lost yardage on first down. I don't remember the last time we had a first down carry that it went for positive yardage. Second and 12. In an ace look, three receivers on the field. And it's going to be a throw. Immediate pressure from an unblocked defender, but he finds his man, Brian Donaldson. He gets nine yards. Going to make it third and three. They're going to be in a shotgun look with Rodney Jennings in the backfield. They like to run this halfback die from here. 
Ronnie James is going to come in motion. And it's going to be a play action pass. He's going to look for what was that? Was that an actual like attempt at a pass? Because that looked like he had a baby arm. So after whatever that was, it's another field goal. So now it is 34 to 14. If Nebraska can get another stop here, I think we can bring in the backups. South Alabama is going to bring a tight end in motion. They have to score and they have to score quickly. Quarterback's going to look to do it himself, but it's another sack. The third sack of the day for Ty Robinson. And the quarterback ran right into that one. It's hard to give Ty Robinson a lot of credit. So South Alabama continue to go backwards. They're going to have it second and 18. Four men rush this time for Nebraska. The quarterback's going to look to take off one more time, but it is another sack. Back-to-back -back sacks. This one for Antonio Gilmore. So it's third and 20. I think this game is officially over. I think we can bring in the backups. South Alabama, they ain't winning this one. Third and 20. It's going to take a miracle for them basically just to get a first down. It's going to be a blitz for Nebraska. It looks like it might be a screen called up, but it is not there. And so it is four sacks and a fumble forced by Ty Robinson. And we have the ball now down at the one yard line. Ty Robinson gets another sack. Four on the day. And he adds a forced fumble. I think we had one or two forced fumbles all of last year. We get one to start the season this year. I paused the recording so I could make all my substitutions and I actually forgot to propose it. So you didn't see our offensive drive. We did get the ball on the one yard line and we lost yards on every single play. So we end up just getting a field goal. It's 37 to 14. South Alabama, all backups in the game for Nebraska are looking to drive here, but it's not gonna be enough. Nebraska are gonna win this game. I'll see you at the end. And the game is finally over. It does end 37 to 14. If South Alabama don't convert a fourth down, Give the ball back to Nebraska, and they run the clock out. It is a really, really good win to start the season for Nebraska. But we have started pretty quickly the past last couple of years. Ty Robinson, by the way, gets player of the game with his four sacks. I can kind of understand that. But we've seen early starts from this team. It's once we get to Big Ten play when we start to struggle. Can we see even more improvement this year? My goal was to get to the Big Ten championship game. I After the first play, I didn't think that was going to happen. After the end of the game, okay, it's back on. Looking at the game stats, Jeff Holland had a pretty dang good game. 21 of 25, almost 300 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, high completion percentage, and a decent yards per attempt, which is where he was one of the worst in the nation last year. He had some big plays, and I'm glad to see that. Only sacked two times as well. And I thought he didn't really make too many awful decisions that got him sacked either. In the running game, 98 yards and an 8.1 average looks amazing, but 80 of those were on one play. So we had 18 yards on 11 attempts. That is absolutely atrocious. The running game was non-existent outside of that 80-yard carry. In the receiving game, we start the season like we ended last year, with Rodney Jennings being our best receiver. Five receptions for 103 yards on the day. Didn't get in the end zone, but he had that 59-yard reception with 53 yards after the catch. He was tremendous once again. No drops. But no drops by Brian Donaldson either. That's something he really struggled with last year. Good to see him have a good start to this season after a little bit of improvement. Will Nixon also gets 59 yards. Jake Pierce with 39 out of the backfield, and Ramir Johnson with 61 after that really long screen pass. Defensively, it was about as start as possible, and there were way, way too many broken tackles. But our pass rush was actually pretty good. Ty Robinson gets four sacks, Tim Hart gets a sack, Antonio Gilmore gets a sack. They just need to tackle. If we can't tackle, we don't stand a chance against some of the better offenses in college football. Because this South Alabama offense and their running game isn't anything special. In terms of coverage, I thought we were pretty solid. It's where we really struggled last year. Our secondary was not very good. I think we saw an improved secondary so far today. Ultimately, it ended up being something that we hadn't really seen before that got us this victory. Big plays. Only 13 first downs compared to 8 for South Alabama, but 416 yards of total offense, 129 rushing, 287 passing, and a lot of those are some big plays that we got in screen passes, that pass to Roddy Jennings on that little corner route, and obviously that 80-yard run by Jake Pierce. In terms of conversions, we weren't even very good. 5 of 12, below 50%. South Alabama were even worse. Fourth down, we converted our only attempt. And we were perfect in the red zone. So we start the season with a really good win over South Alabama. They may be a Sunbelt team, but they are one of the best, if not the best teams in the Sunbelt. This is no minnow that we just beat 37-14. This is a really good win but they're also not as good as Michigan State, Michigan, or maybe even Iowa. So we have to temper expectations a little bit. The offense looked really good today, but is that a bad South Alabama defense or is that our offense just being that much improved from last year? Well, we're gonna find out. Next week, we'll be traveling to Boulder to continue non-conference play, taking on our rivals, Colorado. 
In terms of talent, they're probably pretty similar to South Alabama. Not really much better or much worse. But how big of a difference is it going to be playing on the road? And can our offense, more specifically Jeff Holland and our passing offense, keep playing well? I think we're going to learn a lot about this team next week. And hopefully we can set ourselves up well, because we've got a tough week three game, taking on our first ranked opponent of the season, Miami. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.